Hi there everyone. If you're considering a 7 inch build, this video is for you. Today we're going to be testing some more 2806.5 motors from GEP RC, Emax, Brother Hobby and X Nova and comparing them against all of the 7 inch motors I've tested previously to see if any of this batch of motors can knock the T-Motor F90 and the RC and Power Smooks off the top spot. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive straight into the testing. All right, let's take a look at these motors on the bench. Starting with this, this is the Brother Hobby Avenger 2806.5, 1460 kV. It's a two-piece bell design with an M3 shaft screw and pretty thick magnets, actually. Yeah, the, these magnets are really, really thick on the bell. So this is a pretty lightweight motor, comes in at 46 grams. So we'll see how it, uh, how it stacks up, whether those thicker magnets give it an improvement in performance or not. Then we have this 2806.5 motor from Xnova. This is the Freestyle line. Yeah, again, two-piece bell, single core winding, M3 shaft screw, and uh, magnets look a little bit thinner on this one compared to the Brother Hobby. That can actually sometimes be a good thing though. And this is also a pretty lightweight motor coming in at 46.7 grams. Then we have the GEP RC Speedix 2806.5, 1350 kV. This is a unibel design. I quite like the, the bell design on the top of this. It looks sort of like a, a shuriken or a throwing star. We've got an M3 shaft screw, button head this time, single core windings, pretty typical magnets there with a bit of overlap on the flux ring as well. This motor is a little heavier than the previous two, coming in at 50.5 grams with seven inch wires. The final motor we're gonna look at is the Emax Eco 2 2807. This has got multi-core windings, a two-piece bell design. It looks like an M2 shaft screw on this one. Also, like some glue they've got here between the windings as well, which is not something we see. That's probably to keep the multi-core windings in place. And the magnets look pretty similar to uh, the Speedix and the X Nova. This motor is the heaviest of all the ones we're going to look at today. It weighs 54 grams with 7-inch wires. And that might be because it's got a little bit of a, a larger stator size at 2807. Yeah, so that's the motors we're going to be putting on test. Before we carry on, I have to let you know about AOS Labs. AOS Labs is part of my website, aosrc.com, and it's a secret weapon to help you choose the right parts for your next FPV build. Are you wondering which motors are going to give you an edge on race day? Or which batteries are best for long range flying? AOS Labs has got you covered. I've brought together all of my product testing data from the last two years on this channel in one place so you can make informed decisions and have the best possible FPV experience. Whether you're an experienced pilot or brand new to the hobby, cut through all of the marketing BS with independent scientific test data. And if you still have questions, there's a form at the bottom of every page and you can drop me a line. If you're thinking about your next FPV build, there are links to AOS Labs down in the video description. Diving right into the test results now and starting with, as you might expect, measured KV. To measure KV, I run the motor full throttle at 10 volts and I measure the RPM the motor achieves with no prop. I divide that number by 10 and that gives us the KV in RPM per volt. Looking at the measured versus the rated KV, there are a couple of surprises on this chart. The first is the X Nova FS line 2806.5. That's rated at 1300 kV, but it tests out at about 1150, about 150 kV lower. And that's a lot on a 1300 kV motor. You're really not expecting to have that much discrepancy. And that's going to mean that this motor has a lot less top end than you might expect for a 1300 kV motor. Um, and that's just something to be aware of if you're heading down that route. The Brother Hobby Avenger 2806.5, 1460 kV you'd expect that to have a lot of top end, a lot of power, but actually it tests out, again, quite a lot lower than 1460 kV, more like 1390 kV, and not so far away from something like the GEP RC Speedix 1350 or the RC Empower Smooks from the previous batch of testing. Looking at the Emax and the GEP RC, they both test out pretty similar to their rated kV, so that's nice to see, and you should be getting the kind of performance that you expect from the kV that's written on the motor. The measured KV of a motor can have a big effect on the amount of thrust that it's able to generate. I measure thrust by ramping the motor from 0 to 100% throttle over 10 seconds on my standard test prop, which is an HQ7 by 3.5 by 3. The motor is driven from a 5000 milliamp hour 6S LiPo that's topped up 
with a power supply set to 24 volts, so we get a consistent voltage for every test. Looking at the thrust versus throttle plot, we can see that there's a big variation in performance between these four motors. The Xnova FS line, with its much lower than rated KV, is only able to achieve about 2 kilos of thrust on my 7 inch test prop, whereas the GEPRC Speedix and Emacs Eco 2 are able to do much better than that, getting up to about 2.5 kilos of thrust, which is a 25% improvement. The Brother Hobby Avenger is a similar weight to the Xnova FS line, and it's still able to achieve about 2.25 kilos of thrust. So you can see that underrating the KV of the motor really does hurt its ability to deliver a lot of thrust. Comparing these motors to the ones I tested previously, we can see that the lightweight Xnova and Brother Hobby motors are coming towards the bottom of the leaderboard in terms of the maximum thrust that they can deliver. Whereas the GEPRC Speedix and Emacs Eco 2, they do weigh a little bit more, but they're taking the top two spots in terms of maximum thrust. Now I know some of you will be thinking, I'm not all that interested in maximum thrust. I'm looking to build a long range 7 inch quad and I'm focused on motor efficiency and flying for the longest possible amount of time. To determine that, we need to look at the efficiency of the motor versus the amount of mechanical power it delivers to the prop. And I measure motor efficiency by dividing the mechanical power output to the prop by the electrical power the motor consumes from the battery. Looking at the efficiency curves, we can see there is variation between these motors. The Brother Hobby Avenger has the worst efficiency and its efficiency falls off quite drastically at higher power levels. So that's definitely a motor that you're going to want to steer clear of if you're looking for the most efficient option. The GEPRC Speedix, the efficiency is not great, but at least its efficiency doesn't fall off that quickly as you move to higher power levels. The Emacs Eco 2 and Xnova FS line both do really well in terms of efficiency with not too much fall off even as you increase the power levels up over 500 watts. Comparing the efficiency of these motors against the ones I tested previously, we can see that the Brother Hobby Avenger and GEPRC Speedix are the least efficient motors that I've tested so far, with the Emacs Eco 2 coming out right in the middle of the range. The Xnova FS line is a little bit more efficient, it's third place but it's not drastically more efficient than something like the T-Motor F90, despite delivering a lot, lot less maximum thrust. So we've looked at maximum thrust and efficiency, but there is a third piece to this puzzle, and that's torque and responsiveness. The amount of torque that a motor is able to generate and how fast it's able to accelerate and decelerate a prop are critical to how stable you can keep a larger 7-inch quad in the air. And if you want super smooth footage, you're going to want a motor that can produce a lot of torque and is very responsive. To measure torque, I use a flywheel dyno test. I accelerate a flywheel of a known mass from 5 to 15,000 RPM, and I measure the torque that the motor is able to generate during that acceleration. Looking at the torque versus RPM curves, there are two things we're looking for on this graph. The first is the peak torque value. This is a great measurement of the maximum magnetic performance of the motor, and we can see that the Emax Eco 2 is ruling the roost here with 0.35 newton meters of torque. We then have the GEPRC Speedix and the Xnova, both can get up above 0.3 newton meters, about 0.32 newton meters, with the Brother Hobby Avenger not even able to achieve 0.3 newton meters. So there's a big difference in the magnetic performance of the Brother Hobby versus the other motors. The second thing we're looking at is the slope of the curve and how that torque changes with RPM. We can see that the Emacs Eco 2, the torque falls off more quickly with RPM than for the Speedix or the Brother Hobby because it's got a slightly lower KV. But because it's starting at a higher torque value, it's they're all coming together at the higher RPMs and the Emacs Eco 2 is staying ahead over the majority of the acceleration. The Xnova is really crippled by its very low KV here, and so it's delivering a lot less torque over the whole RPM range. Looking at the torque at 10,000 RPM across all of the 7-inch motors that I've tested so far, we can see a really big range in performance. The Emacs Eco 2 delivering the top of the leaderboard 0.275 Newton meters of torque, the Xnova FS line, 0.15 newton meters. That's a difference of 50% or so. So it's quite a big variation. That difference in torque is going to translate through into difference in motor responsiveness. I measure motor responsiveness by stepping between 10 and 50% throttle and measuring the amount of time it takes the motor to accelerate and decelerate the test prop. I repeat the test multiple times and take the average for acceleration and deceleration, and that gives us our overall motor responsiveness. 
Often we see really good agreement between the results of the torque testing and motor responsiveness, and it's no different today. The Emacs Eco 2 2807 is the most responsive motor that I tested, with the Gep RC Speedex also doing reasonably well, coming in fourth place. The X Nova and the Brother Hobby, the combination of uh, lower KV in terms of the X Nova and lower torque from the Brother Hobby really hurt the responsiveness test, and so you can see they come bottom of the charts. All right, so now that we've looked at all of these test results individually, let's look at the summary scores and try and draw some conclusions. And this summary scores chart can look a bit busy when you first see it, so I'm going to take you through it step by step. We're looking at all of the parameters that we've talked about, motor responsiveness in purple, maximum torque in orange, maximum thrust in red, and efficiency in green, and we've converted them all to scores by normalizing by the average performance of all of the motors on test. So an average motor will score 100, and a motor that's 10% better than average will score 110. Also, we have a total score bar, which is in black or gray, and that total score is just the average of all of the scores. So a motor that performs 5% um, better overall is going to have a total score of 105%. We also have a weight normalized score. And this takes into account the weight of the motor. So if you have a motor that has average performance, but it weighs 10% more than all of the other motors, then that's going to reduce its weight normalized score by 10%. All right, so now that we've looked at the summary scores, let's draw some conclusions. Starting with the Emacs Eco 2. This is a great performing motor. Lots of thrust, lots of torque, good efficiency and great responsiveness. But it's let down a little bit by being quite heavy. And that hurts its weight normalized score. But if you're not worried too much about motor weight, then this is a great performing motor. The Gep RC Speedix also does really well in terms of performance. It's let down a bit by its efficiency, but it is quite a bit lighter than the Emacs Eco 2, and so it just nudges ahead of it in the weight normalized score. The Brother Hobby Avenger, it's a very lightweight motor, but the performance just isn't there compared to some other more modern motors. I think it's it just speaks to it being an older design. It doesn't quite have the performance to stack up against these newer motors. And the X Nova FS line, I mean, this, this motor is just let down by the KV being far too low. Um, for a 1300 KV motor to test out 1150 KV, that's obviously going to hurt it in the performance standpoint. I would definitely maybe steer clear of the 1300 KV version and look for a higher KV option. I'd be quite interested to test the 1700 kV variant and see if it performs much better because that kV is just up a lot higher. All right, I hope you enjoyed seeing how these four 7-inch motors stacked up against the competition. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. And if you want to look at more product testing data, head on over to AOS Labs for a full roundup of all of my motor, prop, and battery testing that I've done so far. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, happy flying.